Hello everybody, my name is Run and welcome back to Events for Beginners. In the last episode, we covered the general overview of the event page, which you'll be looking at a lot during the development of your RPG Maker game. Today, I wanna to dive further into two event page categories, options and autonomous movement. We're going to start with options as they tie into autonomous movement and you can change these options in your autonomous movement routes. As we go through explaining these options and the different types of move routes and move commands, I'll be showing you examples for commands that I think need examples. Some commands like move left or turn right are pretty self-explanatory and I don't really think that they need to have examples with them. All right, let's get started. The options category contains four different things you can use to change the physical behavior of an event. Walking, stepping, direction fix, and through. Let's start with walking. When the walking option is checked, the event page will use the animation cycle present for the sprite sheet that was chosen for the event when that event moves from tile to tile. For instance, let's look at the actor one sprite sheet. If you look at the top row, you can see that there are three frames for the character when they face down. One with the right foot forward, one with the left foot forward, and one standing still. If walking is checked, you will see that animation play out when the character is moving from tile to tile. If walking is not checked, the character will just kind of slide around. Let's look at an example of this. Okay, this uh, zombie here has the walking option unchecked. And as you can see, they're just kind of sliding from tile to tile. They're not making their stepping animation. However, when walking is checked, you can see the stepping animation play out and you can kind of see them put one foot in front of the other. Stepping will do that exact same animation, but while the character is standing still. This can help your characters feel a bit more alive from the standing still motion a lot of them do, but if overused, it can look very odd, especially with these RTP characters. Here's an example of zombie with stepping on and zombie with stepping off. You can see zombie with stepping on looks a little more lively. However, if you had a cutscene playing out with several characters, it would look kind of weird if all of them were just sort of walking in place. However, for some objects, this is incredibly useful as it can add some real graphical depth to what would normally be a boring static object. Let's take a look at this crystal animation. As you can see, the crystal on the left looks a little more visually appealing and is kind of eye-catching, where the crystal on the right is very just kind of boring. It's just sitting there. Direction fix is exactly what it sounds like. It locks the event in the direction that it's facing. So if the event is facing down, but it's direction locked, and you try to interact with it from the left or from the right, it will not turn to face you. We're going to make two zombies, one with direction fix and one without. The zombie on the right does not have direction fix on. You can see it turns to face us. The zombie on the left, however, does have direction fix on. It still executes the contents of the event, but the event does not turn. It remains facing down. The final option is through. If two NPC events are set to move to the same tile, Normally, they'll run into each other and then won't progress because there's another event blocking their way. We're going to turn through off for both zombies, and we're going to take a look at this. Both of these zombies are set to move towards each other three times. You'll see that when they try to do that, they get locked up and frozen into place. Through allows whatever event that has this option chosen to pass through any other event the player character, and any normally impassable tiles like a wall or water. We're going to turn through on for the zombie on the left. As you'll see, the zombie on the left will go right through the zombie on the right. Now that we've gone through all of the options for event movement, let's talk about actually making the event move. Before we talk about the types of movement and how to make your own custom movement instructions, let's go ahead and go over speed and frequency. Speed is how fast the event moves from one tile to the next. Here's two NPCs, one set to normal speed and one set to times four faster. The one on the right that has times four faster is moving from one tile to the other much more quickly than the one on the left. Frequency is how 
often the event chooses to move to another tile. We've now set both events to the same speed, but one has normal frequency while the other has highest frequency. You can see that the one on the right is moving much more often than the one on the left. Speed and frequency will dictate how the event performs the type of movement listed above. With that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the types of movement. As a quick note, there's an event command called set movement route that you can use to make any event on that map or the player move when the player activates that page's trigger. But autonomous movement happens on its own without any input from the player. The first three types of movement are very simple. If the movement type is set to fixed, the event will not move from the tile it was originally placed on. Now you can have that event move through the set movement route command we talked about earlier, but since we're setting it to fixed under autonomous movement, it won't move on its own unless you send the command to do so. Random is exactly that. The event will move completely randomly unless it runs into a wall or some other kind of impassable tile then it will ignore the impassable tile and continue about its random merry way. Approach means the event will always move towards the player no matter where the event and the player are on the map. Let's take a look at this. The zombie on the left is set to approach and as you can see it will follow the player on the map no matter where the player goes. Okay here's the big one. Custom is where you'll get to create your own specific movement route for the event to follow. Once you select custom, you can now select the route button. This is where you'll get to create your own set of instructions that the event will follow for its movements. As you can see, there are a lot of controls, but most of them do exactly what they say. You have a command for each of the cardinal directions, down, left, right, and up, as well as your diagonals. When a command references a direction, it's using it the way that you see it in the map editor. So for example, move up will always move up this direction to the north. Move right will always go to the east. Move down will always go to the south. And move left will always go to the west. These commands will make the event move one tile in that direction. So if you give the command move right, the zombie will move right one tile. Move at random does exactly what it sounds like. It will move one tile up, down, left, or right at random. Move toward the player causes the event to move one tile towards the player. And move away from player causes the event to move one tile away from the player. One step forward and one step back cause the event to move one tile in whatever direction they are facing respectively. For example, if it's facing right on the map, one step forward would cause it to move one tile to the right. Let's go ahead and create an example of this. We have our one step forward command, we have it repeat movements, and we're going to have the zombie face to the right. And as you can see, the zombie is taking steps forward in the direction that it's facing. Jump uses the events X and Y to determine where the event will jump to. If you leave them both at zero, the event will just jump in place. Let's take a look at that. The X and Y are set to zero in the jump command for the zombie on the left, so it's just jumping in place. I guess now would be a good time to talk about X and Y coordinates. Every single tile on the map has an X and a Y coordinate. You can check this at any time by looking at these numbers at the bottom of the editor. The top left tile of any map starts at zero, zero. The X axis runs from the left to the right. So as you go right one tile, you're adding one to your X coordinate. The Y axis runs from the top to the bottom. So every time you're going down one tile, you're adding one to your Y coordinate. You'll get familiar with this as we use these commands more and start to make some events that utilize these coordinates. Going back to movement commands, the next on the list is wait. This movement command is the same as the event command called wait of the same name. Wait does exactly that. It causes the event to wait by however many frames you specify before executing the next command. As you can see here, 60 frames is one second. So if you have a wait command of 120 frames, that would cause it to wait two seconds before the next command on the list. In the second column, we have turn down, turn left, turn right, and turn up. 
These cause the events to turn to face those directions without moving to the next tile. We're going to simplify turn 90 degrees right and turn 90 degrees left because not everybody is great with geometry. An easier way to name these specifically for NPCs would be to turn to the events right or the events left. If the event is facing to the right and you use the turn 90 degrees right movement command, it will turn to the events right, which would be down. If the event is facing down and you select turn 90 degrees right, it will turn to the left. The event's right arm is on the left in this example. So it will turn towards its right arm. Let's take a look at this. Our zombie on the left here has turn 90 degrees right in its movement route and it's set to repeat. As you can see, it's going in a clockwise motion. It is always turning in the direction that its right arm is. Turn 90 degrees left would be counterclockwise. You can use the events right and left or clockwise and counterclockwise or just 90 degrees right and 90 degrees left, whatever helps you understand them the most. I know that sometimes people get tripped up with these two commands. Turn 180 degrees causes the event to turn and face the opposite direction it was previously facing. Let's give our zombie turn 180 degrees and repeat movements. Now our zombie is just turning 180 degrees and facing the opposite direction over and over again. Turn 90 degrees right or left does one or the other randomly. Turn at random turns in any direction randomly. Turn toward and turn away from the player do exactly that once again without moving tiles. Anytime you see the word turn, they are simply turning in that direction, not moving tiles. Switch on and switch off allows you to control your switches, which we'll get into in a future episode. Change speed and change frequency will override whatever the event's current speed and frequency are to whatever you set in these commands. Okay, we're almost done. In the third column, we have the ability to turn off and turn on all the options that we talked about earlier in the video. Why would you want to do that run? Why wouldn't you just set it inside of options and be done with it? Trust me, we'll get more into that in the future. This comes in handy when you're wanting to make more complex events and animation to add some polish to your game. A good example is sometimes you don't always want an event to just go through other events unless it's something like a button event, for instance. Transparent on will make the event completely invisible and transparent off will make it visible again. Let's have this event turn transparent on wait 60 frames and then turn transparent off. Now, as you can see, our zombie friend here is flickering in and out of existence. Change image will allow you to select a different sprite sheet for the event. For instance, you could have somebody change clothing or something. Change opacity will change the event's opacity, which affects its transparency. It's similar to the transparent command, except you can control how transparent it is. Zero being completely invisible and 255 being completely solid. Let's set our zombie here to 100 opacity. As you can see, the opacity of our zombie friend here has been brought down to 100, giving it this kind of uh, translucent or see-through effect. Change blend mode is something that I'll have to admit I don't have much experience with. Blending is an option you see in a lot of graphical editors, and from my understanding, blending is how two layers interact with each other. These most certainly have their uses with various visual effects, which I may research and explore more in the future, but honestly, I never use this command. If you do have a lot of experience with this, let me know some examples of how you use it in the comments. Play sound effect works the same way the event command does and will play a sound effect of your choosing along with controls for volume, pitch, and pan that RPG Maker provides. And finally, script allows you to execute a snippet of code inside your movement route if you are inclined to do so. Now, the last few things we need to go over are here in the lower left portion of the movement route screen. Preview will allow you to preview where the event will end up after the movement route. Let's have our zombie move down four times. Now we'll click preview and you can see the route the zombie will take and the tile that it ends up on. Keep in mind that this is mostly used for the first column of commands. 
Things like transparent on or off and change image won't be reflected in this preview. For our options, we have repeat movements and skip if cannot move. These are named pretty well. Repeat movements will do exactly that. Once it's gone through this entire list of movement commands, it will go back to the top and do it again and keep doing that list of commands indefinitely. Skip if cannot move will skip the current instruction if the event tries to run into an impassable tile. Say you have an NPC with a wall to their right and you want them to move to the right. If this option is unchecked, the NPC will move into the wall, find out that it can't and will be stuck on that movement because it actually cannot move to the right. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. We're going to have our zombie move down four tiles and move to the right two tiles, but we are not going to check skip if cannot move. Now what we're going to do is remove one of the floor tiles along the zombie's path. This will cause the zombie to stop as this tile is set as impassable. Let's take a look at our zombie in action. As you can see, our zombie just stops because skip if cannot move is unchecked. What happened here is that it was executing this list of commands, realized it could not execute the next one because the tile that it would end up on is impassable. Thus, the event just freezes. Now, let's check skip if cannot move. Now, our zombie will try to execute those commands, realize there's an impassable tile, skip that command, and just keep going. We'll get to this in a future episode, but if you're using set movement route inside the event contents, this has the potential to freeze your game if you do not check skip if cannot move. Now there are instances where you would not check this, but we'll go over that in a future episode. Wait for completion would normally be used to force the player to wait until the movement is finished, but since this is under the event's autonomous movement, these commands execute independently regardless of what the player is doing. So wait for completion doesn't matter. Autonomous movement kind of functions like a parallel event, which we'll be going over in the next episode. All right, we did it. We learned autonomous movement for events and options for how events physically behave. If you're new to RPG Maker, I'm sure that was a lot to take in. The best way to learn how each of these events work is to just try them out. Make a bunch of NPCs that move in various ways and see how they interact with each other, with the player, and with the map. If you're an experienced RPG Maker user, tell me about blend mode and how you use it in your project. Even somebody like myself who has been using the engine off and on since I was a teenager can learn something. I think that's what I like so much about this community. There's a ton of knowledge to share and every game almost becomes a sort of collective effort. All of the information you share with someone who is just starting out could end up helping them create the next Sea of Stars or the next Crosscode or the next Amori. I know not all of these were made with RPG Maker, but you kind of get what I mean. Every dev starts their journey somewhere, and with this series, I'm hoping to be a step along your path to create something awesome. My name is Run. I hope you all have a great time with RPG Maker, and I'll see you in the next one.